Ronnie, got a time of death for us? Oh, uh, rough here. I'd say between about eight and midnight. A four hour window. Cold night. Might be able to narrow it down later. Crime scene, do not cross. Yeah, right. Scuffle ended here. Pop part went over with the victim. But it looks like it all started in there. Right here. Doesn't look like the victim's apartment. There's no young person type stuff. Music, whatever. Yeah, building manager says it's a corporate lease. Maybe the victim broke in and stripped off to his boxer shorts. There's no sign of forced entry and the building's got more security swipe pads than we do. Car park, foyer, lift access, apartments. Cameras? No, it's high class tenancies here, mate. Privacy is an issue, apparently. So what have we got from our other very private tenants? Oh, a thump. They're not sure of the time. No one checked. He must have lain down there all night till someone spotted him from the window this morning. Boutique living, eh? What a happy little community. Who's got the lease? Lassiter, Powell and Kemp. Law firm. Oh, what? The senior partners and certain selected staff and clients use the place if they're tied up in town with legal stuff. Lassiter, Powell and Kemp, they're going to be very happy to see us, I bet. Detective Ryan, this is Detective Fring. It's a peer to tear, if you like. Obviously, you keep a record of who uses the apartment, Mr. Lassiter. Obviously. I've asked Julian to make his register of use available. Thank you. If there's nothing else. Do you know who was using the place last night? Nobody, as far as I'm aware. Someone was. Clients use the apartment. What sort of clients? Well, we deal with all sorts of legal matters here, Detective. Everything from Victor's high-profile criminal cases to corporate matters, civil cases, commercial conveyancing. My clients never use the apartment, I can assure you. Now then. Mustn't cast yourself as the black sheep, Victor. <laughs> That'd be my clients, Charles. Come. I checked my register for the use of the apartment, sir, and there's no one down for last night. Well, how do they get in when they do use it? Who has swipe cards? All three equity partners have one. And then there are three spare cards issued on a booking basis to senior staff members, associates and clients. Well, the spares accounted for? Yes. We want to see them and your register of use. Thank you, Julian. And thank you, gentlemen. I have some questions for you too, Mr Lane. Swipe cards have individual electronic signatures. We'll be checking out which one was being used. Detective, <clears throat> I certainly wouldn't want to compromise a police investigation by being overzealous about a client's interests. I believe I can find out to access the apartment. That'd be useful. And we'll need to know how to get in contact with whatever client it happens to turn out to be. No, there's no need to go around banging on doors, Detective. Victor will bring him to you. I will? It is a homicide investigation, Victor. It's a criminal matter, isn't it? <clears throat> we'll require your department's assurance of absolute discretion. Is that understood? Since when do suspects call the shots here? We're not interviewing suspects, Sarge. Someone's helping us with our inquiries. And who set this up? Charles Lassiter. Victor Carling is representing. We thought if it moved things forward, it was worth conceding a point. Okay, Mob 15. And who exactly is helping us? Senior Sergeant. We requested discretion, not a welcoming committee. Nothing happens here without me knowing about it, Mr. Carley. Ross Neven. Pastor Ross Neven. How do you do? Do you know this young man? No. Never seen him before? No. Did you stay in an apartment in the city last night? No, I didn't. Our information is that you did. Your information is that Pastor Neiman has an access card to the apartment. Now, whether he used it or not is another matter. Lawyers. You weren't at apartment 1603 in the Botanical Towers last night. I was, yes, but I didn't stay there. Well, how long were you there? I was in the city earlier in the afternoon, so I dropped in briefly to leave some things. Toiletries and so on. But then later I called in to collect them. And why would you do that? I would finished earlier than expected at the church, so I thought I'd go home. I have a house site in the Yarra Valley. Mm, a big one, I bet. Well, where were you between 8 and midnight last night? At home. Alone? Yes, making notes for a speech I have to give in uh, two hours. Housekeeper? 
staff? He said he was alone. Did you let anyone else use the apartment? No, of course not. That would be an abuse of Charles's hospitality. Oh, so Charles Lasseter gave you his SWAT card? Yes, he extends that favour on occasion. This young man was killed at that apartment last night. He went off a balcony. That's terrible. How do you account for him being there? I can't. Someone had to have let him in. Not me. How did he end up falling to his death? I don't know. Detectives, it's your job to solve this crime, not my clients. Look, I truly wish I could help you with this, detectives, but I can't. I'm sorry. So Pastor Neiman is a very busy man. Are we done? We're accessing the head end software to check Lasseter's swipe card, are we not? Yeah, we could be waiting a while, so Arch Victor Carling's taken out an injunction to prevent us from getting the information. Should have seen that coming. No, take it to the DTP, it's all we can do. Nothing in the victim's clothes or bag to ID him. No driver's license, anything. A small amount of cash and a trouser pocket, that's all. So, Pastor Ross Neiman is a person of interest now. Plus anyone else at the law firm who had access. Which is? Almost anybody. There's three spare swipe cards in a desk drawer in the main office. Mm. Locked? Of course not. Great. So, what do we know about Pastor Neiman? Well respected, lots of charity work. He's a leading pastor, a key figure in Praise Life. It's one of the country's leading charismatic churches. He claims to be one of the anointed of God and he's a major player in his church's administration. Meaning? Secular work, uh, banking, properties, acquisitions. Praise Life has a turnover of about 40 million a year. Praise the Lord. Well, that's why Charles Lasseter's best mates with Neiman. Lasseter, Powell and Camp handle a big chunk of the church's business. He would be a very important client. We've got a match on the fingerprints of our victim, a Roland Allen Petley. What's his form? Minor stuff, shoplifting, indecent exposure, peeing in a public place, drunk. Nothing juicy. And a last known address. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, going through the tissues. What was your relationship to Mr. Petley, sir? We were partners. Okay. We've been together almost four years. We were always going to be together. When was the last time you saw him? Yesterday afternoon. Evening, really, a bit before six. And where was that? Uh, in the city. Um, I dropped him off in a cab, went on to a party. He, he had an appointment. Did he say where he was going? No, no, he was meeting somebody. Was it this man? That's the guy from that Praise Life outfit. You know him? Just from the papers. Was this the man Roland met? I don't know. Okay, I didn't see. I left. I knew something like this would happen. You can make judgments if you like, but you need to understand. I work in an office. I own stuff all. We didn't manage to save any money. We, we wanted to go to California to get married. So why was he putting himself about then? People have dreams, and sometimes dreams are hard. And Roland was doing what he could to make ours come true, that's all. Personals. Seeking same, you, you respond to an ad, uh, a voice mailbox. The ad that Roland answered is, is circled. He was going to earn $5,000 for two nights. He was going to call it quits after this one. I need you to make a formal ID, sir. I'll get my jacket. The pickup point was about four blocks away from the apartment where he died. The guy he was meeting called himself John. John, the work of genius. Seeking same. Dominant gay master, generous, seek submissive gay guy, 18 to 25. For explicit fun. Then there's a voice mailbox number. How does it work? Why don't you call the 1900 number and find out? I'm not calling it. Don't look at me. Wimps. Sounds like an S and M gig, I reckon. Five thousand dollars for a forty-eight hour booking. It'd have to be more S than M, I'd imagine. I would imagine. How'd the Roland Petley ID go? How do they ever go? It's suddenly all real. They wanted to get married. You're making a booking, Duncan. No. Listen to this. Hi. I hope you're adventurous. Leave me a message. Something interesting. Mm. If I like it, I'll get back to you. You recognize that voice? Neiman, sexied up. 
I bet he doesn't use that delivery with his congregation. Hang on. Pastor Neiman, Detective Ryan. You don't need to call me back, but you should probably call your lawyer. We have more questions about the death of Roland Petley. Leave me a message. Something interesting. If I like it, I'll get back to you. We can get that voice analysis done if you insist, but we all know who that is. Well, we do insist. You see, even if that is who you think it is, the message doesn't necessarily link our client to your victim or to the apartment at the time of death. Let's get the analysis done then. I'm sure your client will enjoy recording the same message for our technicians. Give me a break, that's intimidation. Victor. Pastor Neiman called me. He did receive a message from you, Detective Ryan. If he got my message, he has to have the voice mailbox access pin, which means he placed the ad. He doesn't deny it. He still denies having anything to do with the young man's death. Roland Petley answered that ad. He went off that balcony. Your client had access. You provided that access. Now, we want to interview Pastor Neiman today, or we'll charge you with impeding a police investigation. Now, my client is prepared to answer your questions. But in no way is he willing to admit to any wrongdoing with relation to this young man's death. And if any detail of this investigation is leaked to the media, we will be seeking redress in the fullest, both legal and financial. Are we clear? I think so. Do you wish to change your statement, sir? In substance, no. There are some details I omitted. I didn't simply leave my things at the apartment and collect them later. You met someone there? I didn't kill anyone. There are a lot of troubled souls out there, Detective. The ants are simply a way of making contact with them. They come expecting one thing and they get something completely different. I try and counsel them to help them. I don't expect you to believe me, but it's the truth. So then you picked up Roland Petley. And he took off his clothes and got into bed so you could counsel him. <clears throat> I don't know what he did. I got a call from the security company that handles the church's business centre. There'd been an attempted break-in. I had to leave. What time? Just before 10. Well, it's four hours after you picked up Roland. That's a long counselling session. It turned out to be just vandalism. So what'd you do after you cleared this security call out? I went back about midnight. I noticed the broken champagne glass. Saw him below. He was obviously dead. Were you sure? I knew how this was going to look. I called Charles. Charles Lasseter? My lawyer, yes. He's the person who gave you the access card to the apartment? Yes. And? Well, he advised me to take my things and leave. Which I did. And was Mr Lasseter there during the counselling session at the apartment? Detective. Reasonable question. He provides the venue. Did Mr Lasseter know? No. Was anyone else there? No. Victor, I've told him everything that happened. What more can I do? Make sure you remain available to us, Mr Newman. My client has cooperated with you fully so far, Senior Sergeant. If your detectives wish to check the details of his statement, they're welcome to do so. We don't need your permission to do our job, Mr Carling. No, I'd like to speak with your superiors. And why would you need to do that? Because I'm not sure that I can trust you or your detectives to fully understand the legal consequences you face if any of this becomes public knowledge. I'm sure it's in the interest of your firm to see this kept quiet as well. My firm's reputation isn't in question here. It's my client's reputation I'm trying to protect. Your senior partner has actively withheld information from police. That's debatable. He was honouring his client's confidentiality. That is stretching it, Mr Carlin. Senior Sergeant, we can debate the point in court. And we will be in court if any of this becomes public knowledge. You will have writs coming out of your ears. You see... Morals aren't the issue here. The issue is homicide. I hope we all understand where things lie. We do, and thank you for taking the time to tell us. Pleasure. You've got your hands full there, Stanley. Yeah. <laughs> so, I see uh, 
You're clearing your desk, Bernays. Yes, but low-key, I do not want to make a big fanfare out of this. Well, you should. The fellowship's a big deal. So I assume you know when you're leaving. Tomorrow night. Hmm. And you must have news on your replacement. <laughs> Stanley, going down? Yes, Terry. Yeah, you all are. Smashed window at the church's business centre checks out. Security company got a call out at 9:38 p.m. Ross Neiman arrived just after 10. He helped them check the place and left just after midnight once they secured the building. It certainly helps Neiman's case, but it's not a clincher. Could have smashed the window himself and then hung around till security turned up. Then shown up. Yeah. It's possible, given they're still working on time of death. So why kill Roland Petley? Pathology says there is no signs of SM. Just injuries from the impact. Uh, no semen on the sheets, but we all know that guy wasn't up there for counselling. Neiman's lying to us about that. He's probably lying about a whole lot more, too. Still doesn't tell us why he'd kill him. Lovers, Tiff? Lovers? He was a bookie. Detectives, you have a visitor. Mr Cole, have you found anything out yet? Yeah, we're making some progress, sir. Can we help you with anything? Yeah, someone uh, put this under, a, under my door. They want Pastor Neiman. Check out Ty Burnley, 43 Carmody Street, Richmond. He's been like this for about 18 months now. Uh, it's all right. You're OK. He's OK. What happened? Brain damage. He tried to hang himself. The doctor said it was um, oxygen deprivation. And you've been caring for him ever since? Last eight months, yeah. But he was in hospital before that. You do this by yourself? Oh, not exactly. People look in, lend a hand, but most of the time it's just me, yeah. A lot of gear. Yeah. That chair alone costs thousands. But you know, he's my brother. And I was determined to have him at home. And the church has been wonderful. I, I really couldn't have done it without them. The church? Praise Life? Yes, they've been wonderful with the fundraisers and donations and putting a list of helpers together. You know Pastor Neiman? Yeah. Yeah, he and Ty were close before it happened. Weren't you, mate? Pastor Neiman's been a fantastic support to me, spiritually and, and in practical ways too, and a saint. <sighs> Can I get you anything? No thanks, we're fine. Oh. Uh, when your brother had his accident, what actually happened? We're not sure why he did it exactly. Ty's always had his problems, emotional problems. My parents kicked him out when he was 16. Dad turned on him because he was gay. That's Ty, not Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, please. OK. They talked about a civil suit against the church after it happened, but it was just about money, really, for them, not for Ty. So it's just been him and me ever since. Were Pastor Neiman and your brother friends at the time? Yes, Ty was thinking about a ministry with Praise Life. He came out to Pastor Neiman about being gay and Ross was so understanding. Ross? Pastor Neiman. He counselled Ty. He'd been counselling him for months when he tried to kill himself. Ross was absolutely devastated. He felt as if he'd failed him, I think. The pastor was the one who found him? Yes. It happened at a youth prosperity camp. Ty hung himself with a belt on a hook on a door in Pastor Neiman's cabin. Divisional D's attended and took statements. The nurse at the camp tried CPR, but no good. The Ambos eventually managed to get a heartbeat. Maybe it'd be better if they hadn't. Yeah, he was chopped into Queen Victoria ICU. No charges were laid against anyone. Yeah. Attempted suicide. Duncan's talking to the detectives who attended now. Ty Burnley, 21, gay, good-looking. Dominant gay master seeks submissive gay guy, 18 to 25. Yeah, explicit fun. He fits. So what about this civil suit for negligence filed by the parents? It went away. Details suppressed. No case notes, even. Oh, 
Victor Carling weaved his magic, did he? And it wasn't just negligence. There was suspicion of sexual impropriety as well. Against Neiman? Who told you that? The divisional guys. Did his parents know about this? No. They just wanted money out of it. So they sued Praise Life? Neiman organised a monetary settlement, got the whole thing swept under his plush Persian carpet. Right, his sister down is number three, Nathan Cole is number four. Their lives have been destroyed because of him. I want this bloke. So go and get him. Ah, uh, superintendent, you know everyone here, of course. Hmm, yeah, recently reacquainted. How's it hanging, Freeman? Fine, superintendent. Superintendent Jarvis will be taking over from Superintendent Waverley while she's away. Away? Yeah, bit arse about face. I know her lows before goodbyes. We'll organise a cake or something later. You might be able to get onto that. Sheila's normally better at cakes. Now, uh, who's this Nyman clown? Pastor Ross Neiman. He's a person of interest in this case. And you're tap dancing around him because... We're not tap dancing, sir. It's a matter of uh, discretion. It could get political. Yeah. You ask me, politics belongs in Parliament. I like to call a shovel a spade and then hit him over the head with it. Start raising a few lumps, Ryan. Stuck into it. Ty Burnley case. This is history, Mr Lassiter. Very recent history. Get Victor in here. Yes, sir. It's all stacking up now. The apartment, the ad, the cover-up, and now the history. Pastor Neiman is still a client. The Praise Life Church is still a client. I can tell you nothing about the Ty Burnley case. It's done. Over. No, it's not. Looks like Neiman got this Ty Burnley involved in kinky sex and nearly killed him. It should have been intentionally caused serious injury at the very least, but Neiman crawled out from under. And you helped him bury it. And now he's offended. Again. Roland Petley's dead. Haven't you people got any conscience? Who the hell do you think you're talking to? Besides, I deal with corporate matters, not criminal ones. You can't have it both ways, sir. You want client confidentiality, but you claim he's not your responsibility? Well, cut him loose. Tell us what you know. Because this is not going away. Well, from my desk it is. And possibly from this practice. Victor, if you can't handle this, I suggest you find somebody else who can. Talk to Mr. Carling. But do so elsewhere. Close the door, Julian. I'll be with you shortly. Are you part of all this, Charles? What are you talking about? Apart from your desire to retain several million dollars worth of business. Is that why you're scared? Are you screwing young men as well? What? Or just turning a blind eye? To retain the business of Praise Life, you just provide the venue for him to screw them. Is that it, Charles? Get out. He's been going there for months, every few weekends. That's why the injunction. And you made Julian change the records. You initiated the Ty Burnley settlement. You briefed me on the original case, but you pulled all the strings and you lied to me. And I need to know why. I haven't done nothing wrong. Haven't you? I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Still maintaining confidentiality. It's not just convenience. It's the heart of the job. Absolute confidentiality. Well, that's a shame. Yes, sometimes it is a shame. Sky. Someone wants us to crack this open, even if this lot don't. We need to find out who delivered that note to Nathan Cole. Waste of time? Maybe not. He doesn't know how anyone would have found him. So how did they? Like Victor Carling said, absolute confidentiality. No one outside the investigation even knows the identity of the victim yet, much less his address. Only us. And the people at the law firm. Yep.
Mr. Lane, a word. Look, I could lose my job. Did you send us that note? A note? About Ty Burnley. No. But you know who Ty Burnley is. No, I... Look, I heard the name. In Mr. Lassiter's office before. But you didn't send the note? No. When we get the information from that building and we check it against your records, what are we going to find, Julian? I have to do what I'm told. Mr. Lassiter told me to take out my entries about the pastor. How many? About four or five. Weekends over the last few months. Did anyone else know about those entries? This is a legal firm. They have systems in place to monitor who accesses the files. Safeguards. And someone accessed your records of the apartment occupancy? About three weeks ago. Who? Mr. Carling. He accessed my files. Why can we have this meeting at the office? What's going on, Mr. Culling? We know you sent us that note by Nathan Cole. You wanted us to get to Ty Burnley. Why? Because Neiman has been the recipient of Charles's interventions before. When? I was given the Ty Burnley case. Pray's life was an important client. Shall we say Charles was very helpful? Any possibility of a problem just went away. There was no case. How did that happen? Charles was working behind the scenes. So when Roland Petley went over that balcony, you realised you'd been had on the earlier case? On many levels. So why did you represent that Neiman prick again this time? Because I felt I had something to protect. Well, it's all academic now. I'm sure Charles has accepted my terms. I have resigned. Is Lester involved in the sex stuff? He says not. But he did collude in the falsification of the Ty Burnley medical records. He paid off the doctors. And some of the character witnesses. Covered up just to protect the business of Prey's life. How do you know this? I got into the files the other night. They've since been erased. But I'd already printed down the original medical documents. The real ones, as my insurance. But then how do you insure it against your own stupidity? Here. Yeah. It mentions manual strangulation as opposed to hanging. And sexual penetration. Why are you doing this? Neiman? He didn't just use me as his legal whore. He betrayed me. Spiritually. He betrayed me. You have everything you need. Settled in. Chair to your liking, Terry? Mm, beats the one at the drug squad. And uh, am I right in assuming that you haven't had a chance to go through all the paperwork? Yeah, no, me and paperwork's like uh, getting a water buffalo to do a headstand. Yep. Uh, Ma'am, something of a time bomb here, I'm afraid. Really? Well, you'd better speak to Terry about it. He's in charge now. Mm, time bomb. How loud's it ticking? Who do we chuck it at? Mr. Lassiter, welcome. No, Mr. Carling today, sir. Mr. Carling is no longer involved in this matter. Let's get this over with.
Ty Burnley. Well, that matter's already closed. On the basis of false evidence. Go the bastard, son. Why false evidence? That's ridiculous. Records. Bank accounts. Paid witnesses. The doctor was paid to make a false statement and to reevaluate his initial medical report. This is the original. It confirms that there was a sexual element to Ty Burnley's so-called hanging. Erotic asphyxiation. Which ties in to the ad in the paper and to Roland Petley's presence in that apartment. Purely so you and your law firm, Mr Lasseter. So, now, the truth. Our Don't you just love watching the bastards wriggle? As long as they don't fall off the hook and bind us here. Yeah. We'll talk for everyone involved. The truth comes out when everything turns ugly. And if we have to, we'll go public and request more witnesses. We need to talk. Job. And we have to confer. My client and I would like to confer alone, unmonitored. Thank you. Certainly. Let's hear what they have to say. Terry, we listen and nothing is admissible. And everything they say subsequently is inadmissible, you know that. Jesus, you just love that rule book, don't you, mate, eh? I love putting guilty people away. Yeah, we all do, Stanley, OK? And we both know the vicar of Dibley there is as guilty as sin. My client has agreed to make a statement. Good idea. However, I would remind you that... Settlement has been reached on the earlier matter. I'm sure you wouldn't want to do anything today or in the future that may be prejudicial to Ty Burnley's continued welfare. Make waves and they pull the medical support. Bastards. My client also accepts full responsibility for his use of the apartment and acknowledges that I personally had no knowledge of what use he put it to. Is that right, Pastor Neiman? Yes, it is. So what use was that? Ross? That's a private matter. If any of this becomes public... That's up to your lawyers. If you turn out to be responsible for this man's death, we can't guarantee suppression of details. Good lad. Did a mongrel never hurt anyone, eh, Stanley? Your statement. Let's see. I did not kill that young man. Everything else I said about the other night, everything, is true. So the broken window at the office? Yes. Call out? Yes. Going back and seeing the body? Yes. Running away? Yes. Everything except killing him, eh? Yes! When I got back, he was dead. And I can prove it. How? I wasn't in the apartment when I took the call from the security company. I was on my mobile. You can check those things. Can't you? Where were you? I was meeting someone. Another young man. He'd come up to the apartment before. We're friends. He was going to come back up and join us. Threesome. Sydney Opera House. Dirty old pastor. He was with me when I took the call. He waited in the car while I dealt with the security people. Then he came back up with me. He was there when I found Roland Petley. When did you pick up this other boy? Nine o'clock. And given your estimated time of death, that rules out my client. He did not kill Roland Petley. Simply not possible. So if he didn't kill him, who did? So this third boy, this Trent Collins, he confirms Neyman's story? Yes, Sarge. And do we believe him? He was scared witless. We threatened to charge him with failure to report and he nearly died on the spot. And now pathology has a time of death pegged between 10 and 11.30. Neiman's in the clear. So the question remains the same. Who else had access to the apartment? Who else had a swipe card? Maybe this will help, Sarge. The DPP came through. The courts overturned the injunction. These are the head-end software readouts from the building. Mr Lane, we need to ask you some more questions. What, here? Again? Why not? Good a place as any. All the senior partners have alibis for the night of Roland Petley's death. All of them checked out. Plus, we already know that Mr Lasseter didn't have his swipe card. Pastor Neiman had that. What is this? Oh, we're just checking some facts, sir. Which only leaves the three spare cards. I guess so, yes. But you see, there's an entrance and an exit using Mr Lasseter's code. 
The path the Neiman couldn't have made because we know that he was somewhere else at the time. Did you check out one of the spare cards yourself, Mr. Lane, and have Mr. Lassiter's code put on it? No, 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 I didn't, I swear. So are there only three spares? Have any ever gone missing, been replaced? Julian? Only once, three weeks ago, and he replaced it at his own cost. Who said they lost the card? Victor. Mr. Carling. You said something strange yesterday, that Neiman had betrayed you, spiritually. What betrayal? I've told you most of the story anyway. About finding out that Neiman was using the apartment on a regular basis, putting together how they used you on the Ty Burnley case. That's right. Going to the office at night, getting the records, printing them. Yes. What about the bit you left out? Swiping the supposedly lost card with Charles Lasseter's coat. Yeah. So you can get into the apartment without anyone knowing. Why? When I found out that he was using the place, I saw a pattern. So I watched the apartment a couple of times to see if I was right. And I was. He was taking boys up there. Young boys like Ty Burnley. And? I go to his church. My boys go to his church. My boys have been to those prosperity camps. You see, three years ago, my wife I left the Anglican Church because I thought I'd found something that was real for me, for my boys. I thought Neiman was a special man, that he had something to offer. That's why I represented him. But it was a lie. It was all a lie. That man is a lie. What happened the other night? I let myself in. Neiman wasn't there. He went to pick up another boy. That's when you found Roland Petley by himself? Yeah, I, I walked in and he... And the poor kid just went, just went crazy. He started screaming at me, saying he wasn't being paid for a, a double act or something. I tried to calm him down. He got so violent, he pushed me. Something got broken. I tried to reason with him. I really did try to reason with him, but he was flailing around with me. He threw a punch at me, I ducked. And I looked up. He was gone. Just gone. I've sat here so many times and heard it said wonder whether I should believe it or not. And here I am now, saying it. I didn't mean to kill him. It was an accident. A good start, team. Manslaughter, at least. That's one that won't be getting off the hook. Charlie at least has a conscience. Be better if I can say the same about Pastor Neiman. Oh, don't worry. We'll get back to him. New evidence on Veggie Boy. The church will probably hang him out to dry. Maybe that'll be some sense of justice for Ty Burnley's sister. No, it wouldn't be right. The church they just cover it up, like they always do. The pastor, you just walk.